What's going on guys? Welcome back into the channel. In today's video, we're going to be discussing renewable contracts and we're going to do a separate video based on the other types of contracts that you can have within the game, is specifically talking about players that are arbitration eligible, exclusive free agents, things like that. But in today's video, we're going to specifically talk about renewable contracts because that is a major source of player contracts within the game and it is something that I feel is not that well understood across the uh, the franchise community and MLB the show and I get a lot of comments requesting that I make videos on these topics so I definitely want to cover renewable contracts first because this is going to be a wide majority of your players in fact you can see right here that I have contract negotiations scheduled here in the the latter part of this season with the Pittsburgh Pirates however I'm only able to negotiate with a certain portion of my roster. So these are actually players that are on my 40-man roster. I can't actually yet negotiate with every single player within my system. However, when you go to just about any prospect within your system and you take a look at their contract details, it's going to show that RNW underneath a couple of years for them, which is specifically going to indicate that their contract is in fact renewable. And that's something that we certainly have to take into account is that a majority of these players within our system are going to have those renewable contracts and we're going to want to renew those contracts because they're going to be inexpensive and so whenever you are negotiating with a player that is not down within your system or rather is on your 40-man roster I should say it's a little bit different because they're they're likely going to be making more money as you can see with Miguel Jorge here because he's been up in the majors at a certain point in time because he's had options back down to the minor he is on technically a renewable contract still, but he's making far more money than most of those prospects that are only making fifty or sixty thousand dollars. The thing to understand with players that are on a renewable contract is pretty much any time that you go to sign those players, they're going to be happy to sign a contract that is at that value of their existing contract. So we saw that Miguel Yahore's contract is at seven hundred k. He's going to be happy to sign a contract at seven hundred k for those renewable years. So, you know, if I project this out three years, for example, where it still says in the bottom right, service time renewable, he's gonna be happy to sign a 700K contract every single one of those years. If you look at the right on the interest bar, it's gonna be green every single time. So you're always gonna be able to re-sign players that have renewable contracts at the value of their existing contract. So you wanna keep that in mind because sometimes when you come to negotiations with these players, they might be asking for more, but if they are on a renewable contract, you're going to have the ability to simply renew it at a cheaper price. A great example of this, for example, would be starting pitcher Bryce Wilson, who's 24 years old, still has renewable service time down there at the bottom, but is automatically asking for a two-year deal worth more money than the renewable contract. So if we take a look at his existing deal, for example, we can see that he's, again, a player that's only making $700,000, but he's asking for over a million whenever we actually negotiate a contract with him. So if we bring the amount of years down so that we're only affecting the renewable amount, if you look down there in the right hand corner, if we bring this down to one, we're only affecting his renewable year, we can then take this money down to what would be effectively a renewable contract for him. And in fact, you don't even have to renew it at 100% of the price. In fact, the way that this actually works is that you can renew a player's contract at 80% at a minimum of their existing contract. So because he's making 700K, I can technically renew it at 80% of that and pay him less technically than what he's making now. And most times they're going to be pretty happy with that. You can see the green bar over there. It does not drop significantly going down that much in money, taking it down past the existing 700 K that he's making. And that's programmed into the game to allow you to renew these contracts for these players based on their service time. So that's really important for us to keep track of for us to know, because that's going to affect a lot 
lot of players, especially your younger players within franchise mode that might have a renewable time left on their contracts. Now, the very first thing that you guys need to know whenever we actually head to the off season and we start to talk about renewable contracts and in the other videos when we start to talk about arbitration and things of that nature is that there's a certain point where you're going to not be able to re-sign these players if you don't at least offer them a contract. So if we go to look at date significance on December 2nd here, it's going to tell us all players must have contracts tendered by December 2nd or they will become free agents. This includes all players eligible for salary arbitration or contract renewal. The very important point here and the very important distinction is that you must tender a contract. That does not mean that you have to have signed a contract with that player. It simply means that you have to have offered them a contract. You have to have tendered them a contract. So essentially what it's saying is that if I wanted to renew Bryce Wilson, for example, I have to make him an offer. I have to go in here and let's say I want him for cheaper than what he's actually asking for, I can do that. And in fact, a lot of times when you get to the off season here, you can sign them for significantly less than what their renewable amount would be or significantly less than what their actual value is showing that they want or what their existing contract actually was. And the reason for that is exactly what we went over earlier. You can renew these contracts at 80% minimum of what they were already. So if you actually do the math, 80% of the 700K that Bryce Wilson was already making is 560K. So I'm just going to go ahead and offer him that 560K and be happy with that. And I'm going to do the same thing with all of my other renewable contracts. And you can see that I can go below what they're looking for. So he's looking for 50k a year Diego Castillo I can sign him to 40k a year and he'll be happy with that and you can see up at the top of the screen they're getting a full bar now they might not sign immediately but the important thing to note is again that you want to at least tender that contract offer them a contract otherwise they will outright at December 2nd just go into the free agency poll and that's at the very least what you want to avoid now, the other very crucial point here to remember is that whenever you get into the off season, and I believe that this is once you actually reach free agency stage one, after you have passed the exclusive free agents period, you will then have access to re-sign everybody within your system, whether they are renewable, whether they are arbitration eligible or anything of that nature, they will then all pop up, pop up on your screen. So you guys can see before, I could only sign a handful of players that were on my 40 man roster roster, Miguel y Jorge, all those types of players. Now I have access to pretty much every single player within my system. And a lot of these guys are going to have, as I mentioned, renewable contracts that are going to be beneficial to the team. And a lot of the players uh, are going to have that renewable contract, renewable status next to their name to let you know that. And that is going to be what you're going to be on the lookout for. Now, the other thing to mention here is that, you know, technically a lot of these players aren't going to have quote unquote quote, contract renewable next to their name. And that's because they're on quote unquote, minor league deals. So as you saw, whenever I went into Sammy Siani, for example, and I go to make an offer, it's going to say minor league next to him in next to the service time on the bottom right. So this really only triggers for certain categories of players based on their MLB service time. Players generally had to have been up at the major leagues, I think at some point in order to achieve that renewable status but technically speaking all of these minor league contracts are somewhat renewable I mean they're gonna come back at a very inexpensive price some of your prospects that played really well are of course going to demand more money we can certainly go through some of these prospects like Henry Davis who is now up to an 80 overall and has not had any MLB service time he's now gonna request eighty thousand dollars a year but that's still chump change compared to anything that I would be offering to anybody else. It doesn't technically say that his contract is renewable. And let me go ahead and move my camera up into the top right hand corner of the screen so you guys can actually get a good look at that in the bottom right, how it shows minor league. I just wanted to make sure you saw that. So it's, it's technically kind of renewable, but it doesn't classify as a renewable contract. But nonetheless, you're going to have this opportunity here. You're not going to lose out on the players within your system. 
And then basically the last point that is very important to understand is that there's not like a specific phase of the off season that's gonna be a renewable contracts phase like there is with arbitration. So arbitration happens with these negotiations whenever you reach a certain point on the calendar, which is after December 2nd in this season, which is after that point where you can click on it, you can view date significance. And like I said before, it's gonna mention all that information about where contracts have to be tendered by. You essentially have from the end of the exclusive phase at the very beginning of the off season until this beginning of December time frame to renew those contracts for those players and sign all of those minor league players. The only difference where things come in is with arbitration players where they get a specific period here now where you can arbitrate with those players and you can see at the bottom of my screen I now have arbitration negotiations. That's going to happen in December through winter meetings and things of that nature. So that is a specific phase and I don't want you guys to get that confused with the renewable contracts because there is no such specific phase for renewable contracts. It's not really something that exists. You just have to make sure that you have those deals in by the beginning of December. Otherwise, those players are going to hit the free agency pool and you certainly don't want that because anybody that's eligible for a renewable contract that you want to keep on the team is going to be able to be retained to your team for a very very inexpensive price. You don't want to lose out on that. And really, that's all there is to it. Renewable contracts are a very nice tool to have to be able to retain players to your team for not that much money, especially for teams that need to retain that amount of salary to be able to spend it in other areas. It is extremely helpful to have as a tool. One thing that I do want to remind you, though, is if a prospect gets to a point where they are very high overall or they're going to be very high overall at the end of the day, you may may want to consider just giving them a contract now to save the money in the future rather than renewing, 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 arbitrating, 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 and then all of a sudden they're a 99 overall and when you have to negotiate a contract with them, they want hundreds of millions of dollars. Now, I'm not saying that one way is right or the other way is right. I'm not saying one's wrong or right, uh, but there are different strategies to go about it and there are certainly trade-offs that you want to think about. If you can get them on a 10, I don't know, some of these players are signing 10 year deals now. If you can get them on like a seven to 10 year deal, like Cabrian Hayes signed a contract for what, seven or eight years with the Pittsburgh Pirates. If you can get them on that deal that is going to be team friendly when the player is worth significantly more down the line, you may want to do that. You're going to end up paying more right now for that player, but that could be worth the trade off. Otherwise, if you're going to play it like the Pittsburgh Pirates do in real life, you're going to choose every little bit of renewable ability and arbitration to take that to your advantage to keep them cheap right now and then send them away whenever they're expensive and let another team pay them a big contract. There are different ways to approach it, but that's basically everything you guys need to know about renewable contracts in MLB The Show in franchise mode. And I do hope this information was useful to you. If this was useful to you, leave a like down below, comment and subscribe. Please leave all that feedback. As always, I'll see you guys in the next video and I hope you have a good one.